So I just talked about vegan influencer Caroline Diesler, specifically comments from people concerned about the health of her baby, her 18 month old baby, Haley. This baby isn't healthy. How? And I basically said, come on, guys, this doesn't mean she's unhealthy just because she's not walking by 18 months. There are plenty of babies not walking by 18 months or even past 18 months. It doesn't mean that anything is wrong. She looks healthy and adorable. And sure enough, like a day or two after I posted that video, Caroline posted this reel of Haley walking. That said, just because Haley is walking and seems perfectly healthy doesn't mean the diet Caroline is feeding her is ideal. And there are reasons to believe it is not. For one thing, Caroline's diet is certainly not ideal. It's pretty weak. She just posted this what I ate today that is, oh my God, it's so awful. Celery juice, fruit, fruit, more fruit, chocolate, hazelnut, date, cookies, some pasta, yeah. No beans whatsoever. Like this is so low in protein iron, zinc. It keeps her thin, yeah, she can rock these little bikinis, but it's a shit diet. You can be thin and get plenty of zinc, you know? Like, <laughs> they're not mutually exclusive. Second, as I discussed in this video, there are concerns about Haley's diet as well. It looks much, much better than Caroline's. There's more beans, certainly, more beans than, like, zero. But all of this, all of my information for this video was just based on a few reels. Now we have this, this book, Vegan Baby Led Weaning from Caroline, 70 recipes and meal ideas based solely on what she feeds Haley. And the ridiculousness of this is not lost on me. I'm sure it's not lost on you either. Like a woman selling a parenting book based on her experience with one 18 month old baby. Actually, Haley was like 15 months old when she was writing this. So yeah, it's, yeah. Anyway, let's look at the book. Caroline starts with baby led weaning. What is it? What are the benefits? I won't go into a lot of detail here because I already have an entire video on baby led weaning. She gives us the typical unprovable BLW talking points. Baby led weaning boosts babies' self-confidence. It improves gross motor skills and hand-eye coordination, improves jaw development. So spoon feeding will hinder jaw development. No, there's no evidence for that because of course there isn't. If you're spoon feeding a kid till they're like 10, yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> most people, most parents are only spoon feeding for a few months to a year. And even during that time, most kids are eating foods as well. They are chewing lots of different foods. They're eating finger foods, right? When your baby leads the way, there is little room for overfeeding. While some studies seem to demonstrate lower weight gain in infants that apply baby led weaning, others show inconclusive results. The risk of bias in all included studies was moderate or high. More clinical trials and prospective studies should be done prior to providing a general recommendation about the best method of weaning to reduce the risk of obesity. It's so nice for you, oh sorry, it's so nice for you and your baby to sit at the table together and make family meal times a routine. Your baby will see you eat eating and will automatically feel included rather than being spoon fed at a different time. You don't have to spoon feed at a different time though. Like you don't, you don't have to. Just because you're spoon feeding doesn't mean you can't eat together and like have a routine. It's, it's pretty silly. The risk of choking is much smaller when your baby self feeds compared to you putting food into your baby's mouth. Yeah. No. The evidence suggests that the two are similar, that there is not an additional risk of choking with baby led weaning, but I have found nothing suggesting that baby led weaning actually reduces the risk of choking. The truth is we all should be concerned about choking, right? Whether you're doing just spoon feeding or just finger foods, whatever, like we all should be concerned. We all should know the basic guidelines and use basic common sense. Now, to be fair, Caroline does stress this. She does stress being careful, always watching your baby while they're eating, even taking a first aid baby course. That's fantastic. Remember, it is supposed to get messy, and as long as you are well-equipped with a floor mat and bib, it's quite easy to control and keep the mess in one place. Hee <laughs> hee. Overall, I have been loving the whole, sorry, loving the whole journey. This always cracks me up. Baby led weaning is the messiest thing I've ever seen, but I love it. It's really, I love it. It's so fun. Okay. I saw this comment. Maybe it was on my baby led weaning video. I can't remember where I saw it. Someone was talking about like a friend of theirs who was doing baby led weaning with their baby and that friend had a party. And so this person, the, the OP went to the party along with a bunch of other people and the parents were just 
letting the baby feed themselves and like throwing food everywhere. Food was getting on like the other guests and the parents just thought it was the cutest, funniest thing. And the guests were like, no, no this is disgusting. <laughs> and remember, Caroline only has one kid. Haley is her only child. She spends seemingly all day at home. Her job is influencing, right? Like she makes money feeding her baby. That is part of her job. I can just imagine a working mom of multiple kids trying to deal with the mess and pretend the mess is so fun when they've got like their four-year-old son screaming at them, screaming at baby to stop smashing avocado in his hair. You know, like is <laughs> No. Having a colorful plate of different fruits and veggies makes them curious to explore the different colors, textures, shapes, etc., rather than being spoon-fed at purees. Again, you can do both. As most people already do, most people already do a combination of spoon-feeding pureed stuff and finger foods, letting their kids pick up stuff and eat it. As I said in my baby led weaning video, baby led weaning is fine if that's what works for your baby and for you. But there's no reason to think it is better than your typical spoon plus finger feeding. The evidence does not support it being better and plain old common sense doesn't support it being better. The most important part of feeding babies, feeding anyone, is the food itself. So let's talk about the food. 70 delicious recipes. Um, so one recipe is persimmon and vanilla. Another recipe is persimmon and carob. It's also a pudding. Whether either one of these is worthy of being a standalone recipe that you charge people money for, it's debatable what people find is worth it. You know, it's, it's subjective, whatever. But at least, at least make one of these a variation. You know what I mean? Like make the standard vanilla one the standard one and then just have it as a variation, not as a separate recipe. Like, is that nitpicking? Probably. There are also just a lot of very similar recipes. A lot of oats, a lot of dates, banana, flax, almond milk flax, oat pancakes, oat waffles, breakfast bars, oat muffins, banana bread bars. They're all basically the same recipe. Sugar free. Now, if you saw, I think my first video on Caroline where I looked at one of her recipe books like for adults, this was a problem for her. She listed it as sugar free and yet included coconut sugar in a lot of recipes. Coconut sugar is less processed than your typical, you know, refined table sugar, but it's still processed and it's still just mostly sugar with very, very little nutrients. It is basically indistinguishable from regular sugar. Coconut sugar is added sugar. Gluten-free is also wrong. This is crazy to me. Like a few of the recipes call for sourdough bread, just fresh sourdough bread, not gluten-free. One recipe calls for spelt, also not gluten-free. Another calls for orzo, another one pasta shells. Now she does put GF in other cases, indicating that she knows the standard, you know, original version of these is not gluten-free. So maybe she just doesn't know sourdough bread is not gluten-free, or maybe she just got lazy and didn't proofread. I don't know. Seems like an editor would have helped here, would have caught these mistakes. Otherwise, the recipes honestly are fine. They're very simple, but that's to be expected for babies. I actually really love this baby granola idea. She roasts a bunch of nuts and then blends them all really finely in a Vitamix. Super healthy and an easy way to get little babies nuts, right? It's hard to get them nuts and seeds without putting them in a smoothie or something. Same sort of thing for the iron sprinkles. Again, finely ground seeds. Great idea. She uses nutritional yeast. Awesome. Such a great way to get in B vitamins, of course. She has a couple tofu recipes, tofu scramble and these tofu bites. Great source of protein, iron, zinc. I love this meal idea. Again, the tofu bites, avocado, papaya, you've got protein, you've got healthy fat, you've got vitamin C in the papaya to help with iron absorption, iron from the tofu. Fantastic. For the mac and cheese, she puts carrots in the sauce, the carrot potato thing. If you've been vegan long enough, you've probably tried that cheese sauce. I actually really like it personally. But yeah, carrots have lots of vitamin A, so that's great. These stuffed pasta shells, a little bit weird, but super healthy, so full of protein. I think this is probably the most protein rich thing in the book. You've got tofu, edamame, peas. Okay, this one did make me laugh. <laughs> this choco pop, it's supposed to be like cereal. Uh, man, that looks nasty. <laughs> but overall, the recipes themselves, just taken like one by one, they're great. Really, really healthy, really simple, really easy, quick to make. But you've seen the length of this video. There's, there's a lot more to talk about and it's not very nice.
Caroline tells us on page 13 that she is neither a pediatrician nor a dietitian, which I do appreciate, but I also find it rather frustrating given how she portrays herself elsewhere, like on Instagram. She often calls herself a vegan nutritionist on her website. She says she has a nutritionist degree. I don't know about you, but when I hear degree, I think like a four-year degree, like you went to college, like a real college, like a dietitian. The truth is in many countries, nutritionist and dietitian are distinct, right? Dietitian is an actual four-year degree at a real college. Nutritionist can mean basically anything. Since again, she says she is not a dietitian, I'm guessing it's the same in Switzerland and that whatever degree she got is really just some like bullshit online course that she paid for so she can call herself a nutritionist and come across more credible. Whatever degree she paid for, she needs to get her money back. I mean, she thinks this plate of fruit is a meal. Now, if your baby's a typical omnivore living on eggs and meat and like refined cereal, no fiber, then yeah, fruit meal, two fruit meals, three fruit meals, probably a good idea. But for baby Haley living on dates and oats and bananas, no ma'am. Good nutrition, no caffeine for you or your baby, and a happy environment plays a huge role in having a calm and content baby. So me not drinking coffee, me, me not drinking coffee somehow leads to my baby being calm. I feel like some people who don't drink coffee have just the silliest vision image in their head of what it's like to drink coffee, right? Like the cartoons where they're just wigging out like they're methed up or something, or like <laughs> Saved by the Bell, right? <laughs> the caffeine episode that I'm so excited. I wish coffee were that potent. It's not. She has this whole Iron Rich Foods page that is great on the face of it, right? Baby's iron stores start to run out four to six months or so, so it's really important to have an iron source for them at about six months. Actually, the AAP recommends iron supplementation now at four months, I think four to six months, and then you start giving them iron rich foods like infant cereal. So I very much like the idea of this page. However, some of Caroline's suggestions are a little bit weird. Spinach? If you're talking per calorie, sure, but tiny babies are not eating a lot of calories. The average six month old is not eating much more than an ounce at a meal and usually only one meal a day. Six to 12 month old babies need 11 milligrams of iron each day, yet one whole ounce of spinach only has 0.8 milligrams. It is not a good source of iron for babies. Same for beet, green beans, quinoa, really all of these foods, because again, babies eat so little. These oat pancakes, she says they are iron boosting, yet they contain only 3.3 milligrams for the whole recipe, 370 something calories. A tiny baby ain't eating all those pancakes. Iron boosting hummus with beets. Beets contain virtually no iron. Like if you just made a regular hummus recipe, it would have more iron <laughs> than this beet hummus. Now compare these iron boosting recipes to iron fortified infant cereal, almost seven milligrams in a quarter of a cup. We recommend filling the gap with iron fortified products such as iron fortified baby cereal and continuing to supplement if your child has a small appetite or you are having trouble meeting their needs through diet. That is from the plant-based baby and toddler, the best vegan baby nutrition book written by actual dietitians, not nutritionists. Caroline, of course, does not recommend infant fortified cereal because she doesn't recommend any processed products. Except for supplements. Thank God Caroline is not anti-supplement. She even gives Haley an iron supplement along with probiotics. Okay, whatever. Vitamin D, very important. Although seems like Haley gets a lot of sunshine as does Caroline. DHA, that's great. B12, fantastic. Of course, coconut yogurt fortified with calcium. I was very surprised to see that, but also great. Unfortunately, it doesn't make much of an appearance in this book. She doesn't use it very often at all. She also lists soy milk as something to feed. Again, fantastic. But I didn't find one recipe that includes soy milk. She does include almond milk in several, but she doesn't say whether or not that's fortified almond milk, calcium fortified. Fortified. Point is, based on this book and, and the reels that I've seen of what Haley eats, I seriously doubt she's getting a good amount of calcium from her diet. Caroline just does not give her a lot of calcium rich foods. Just a serving, just one serving of calcium fortified soy milk would make a huge difference. Selenium also goes unmentioned and there's just not a whole lot of grains in these recipes. She does use Brazil nuts in a few. No mention of zinc either, which might be okay. There are several recipes with nuts and seeds, a few with legumes, but vegans might have higher needs. So I personally would not feel comfortable feeding a growing child or an adult 
a diet like this without an additional zinc supplement. Choline, again, not mentioned. There's very little evidence on how much choline we actually need and even less on the needs for children. There's no RDA for choline. There is an AI adequate intake, 150 milligrams for seven to 12 months, and then 200 for one to three years. Soy is by far the best plant source for choline. It is going to be virtually impossible to meet the AI without eating soy every day. That's why Alexandra Caspero and Whitney English, these are the authors of the plant-based baby and toddler book. This is why they recommend vegan babies and toddlers get two to three servings of soy a day. Going by Caroline's book and her Instagram, it is clear that Haley is not eating anywhere near that. Finally, protein. As I've said elsewhere, since little tiny babies need so little protein, it is virtually impossible not to give them like double, triple, quadruple the RDA. Then again, most children are not eating fruit meals. More importantly, vegan protein sources like legumes tend to also be good sources of certain minerals, iron, zinc, selenium. There's a really good chance that a vegan baby or vegan adult who is not getting a lot of protein, not eating a lot of legumes, probably not getting a lot of iron or zinc or selenium either. There's a reason reputable nutrition sources recommend protein-rich plants at every meal, every single meal. Salt, sugar, and honey are a no-no for your baby. So ignoring that she literally gives her baby sugar, there are reasons to avoid sugar and salt. Obviously honey, yes, you want to avoid honey, but there are reasons as well to avoid sugar and salt in the first few months of introducing solids. Food preferences might be partially developed during this time, so it makes sense to encourage babies to like the taste of healthy foods on their own without salt or sugar. Also, babies cannot handle a lot of salt. Now that doesn't mean that a little bit of salt or even a moderate amount is going to hurt them. But again, it makes sense to limit it or even leave it out completely. Now, I should mention many people have challenged these guidelines. This recent narrative review argues that there's very little research on how much salt babies can actually handle. The studies we do have were conducted on newborns, not six-month-old babies. And there's not much convincing evidence that eating no to low salt in infancy influences salt preference in adulthood. Now, it's not clear at what age Caroline thinks salt is okay for babies. It seems like she still does not salt Haley's food, which could be a problem in terms of sodium, right? Plants are typically pretty low in sodium. I personally would not feed a baby or an adult a diet like this without adding some iodized salt. Speaking of iodine, there's no mention of it in this book. No mention of seaweed either. This is the most worrisome thing in this book. It's more worrying than the selenium or the zinc or even the calcium. Plant-based babes have to be especially careful of iodine deficiency because the main sources of iodine in the diet are dairy and seafood. Iodine is naturally found in soil, but plants are not a reliable source because amounts vary considerably, and reports suggest that soil erosion and water runoff have depleted the natural iodine content of soil worldwide. Breast milk is a good source, assuming the mother is getting plenty of iodine, but of course breastfeeding does not last forever. All vegan toddlers who are no longer breastfeeding should receive a daily supplement with 45 to 90 micrograms of iodine, depending on whether or not you use iodized salt. Any parent following this book's guidelines is putting their baby at significant risk for iodine deficiency, which to be clear, is very bad. There's a reason the United States and many other countries started iodizing salt decades ago. I don't ever like to encourage going to someone's account and like bombarding them with comments or messages or anything like that. This is really bad. So I would love it if you guys would go to Caroline's page and just kindly, maybe just one person leave a comment saying, hey, are you making sure Haley is getting enough iodine? Have you considered iodine or maybe giving her a multi or using just a little bit of iodized salt? Have you read the plant-based baby toddler book? I don't know, just something really nice, right? Just to kind of educate in a nice way and then other people maybe can upvote it. Does it push things to the top on Instagram? It seems like Caroline, even though she calls herself a nutritionist, I don't think she actually knows a whole lot about nutrition. I wouldn't be surprised at all if she just had no idea about iodine and that her child may not be getting near enough iodine. If there's one piece of advice I would follow, it's to listen to your gut feeling. A mom's intuition is still the best. So I had a friend growing up whose brother was obviously struggling, two years old, nonverbal, wouldn't really like play with other people, make eye contact. When they had toys, they would hoard them and even like line them up. That's how they played with toys. We were young at the time ourselves, like preteen, somewhere around there. And 
at that time, autism wasn't nearly as well known as it is now. So, you know, I don't think I even knew that word. My friend didn't, but she definitely told me like, something's wrong. Something's wrong with my little brother. Her mom, on the other hand, thought he was fine. Her mommy intuition told her that nothing was wrong. He's just developing a little bit slowly. Uh, Yeah, everything was not fine. They finally got him diagnosed at like close to four years old with autism. He could have been diagnosed two years earlier, perhaps, maybe have received help during that time, but uh, mommy intuition got in the way. My mommy intuition told me that there was something wrong with my firstborn when they were about 13 months old because they were 13 months. They weren't walking yet. They were barely eating solids. They had like two teeth, I think. It felt like something was wrong, but the evidence was clear that something very likely was not wrong. And my pediatrician confirmed like, it's fine, nothing's wrong. And sure enough, a month and a half later, baby was walking, eating way more food, popping out more teeth, (laughs) like everything was fine. Now, sometimes mommy intuition is right, but it's because it happens to be right. It's not some like powerful magic that we possess. It's because the mom has experience and is using good reasoning. Like when a mom who spends all day with her child notices something small, something's a little bit off, takes the child to the doctor and something is off, something's wrong. And sometimes when they take the kid to the doctor, the doctor says, no, it's fine and waves it off. And it's not fine, it is serious. And people go, oh, see? mommy intuition, she knew. But like, no, that's just doctor stupidity or arrogance, ignorance, apathy. There are moms who feel so strongly that vaccines are harmful. Moms who feel so strongly that raw milk is healthy, that iodine doesn't matter, apparently. This is why studies are conducted, right? Studies about vaccines, about feeding practices, because mommy intuition is not the best. That was a bit much maybe, but like, As you can probably tell, I really despise the sentiment. I know it's coming from a good place, but I just find it really childish and anti-scientific. So many old wives tales, so much like woman slash mother knowledge that's been passed down has proved to be bullshit. And yet so much of what we know about healthcare, about nutrition, about child nutrition comes from studies. The importance of folate for fetal development, that comes from hard science. Scientists have done more for improving infant health and mortality than mommy intuition could ever dream of. Mommy intuition could never. (laughs) There are a lot of mistakes in this book, not a whole lot in terms of like misspellings or grammatical errors. I mean, you've got the, the extra Y's and O's and whatever, but that's clearly intentional. The mistakes I'm talking about have more to do with just little omissions and kind of the the sparseness of the information or the the um, shallowness of it. Like the almond milk thing it should really be clear. What almond milk? What almond milk? She's talking about homemade almond milk, store-bought almond milk. Okay, if it's store-bought, is it sweetened or unsweetened? Is it calcium fortified or not? Who is this book for, right? She talks about toddlers. She talks about babies. The, the needs of babies and toddlers, like, you know, before one year to three years to four years, like there's there's a difference, right? A four-year-old has different nutrient needs and fewer restrictions than a one-year-old. And going back to the plant-based baby and toddler book, they are very clear about what ages they're talking about. But again, they're actual dietitians, so makes sense. Another example of just the shallowness, like beetroot is recommended in small doses for babies under one. Why? She's right. There are reasons it has nitrates. You don't have to run through every single study and every single case report, but I do think there should be a little bit more information. Like we're talking about feeding babies, right? And again, she says this for beet, but she doesn't say it for spinach. There are recipes with spinach. (laughs) Fuck. Point is, all of this could have been fixed with a competent editor, someone to read through the book and go, hey, what about this? Maybe you should clarify this, fix this. So in conclusion, it seems like Caroline is feeding her daughter much better than she feeds herself, thank God. However, there are still some concerns. I think the biggest ones to me, obviously iodine and calcium as well. Luckily, these are extremely easy to fix. Again, soy milk or even pea milk, some sort of calcium fortified protein rich food that would help get her more protein as well. Every single day, at least a cup every single day would make a huge difference. And for iodine, there are lots of vegan kids, Maltese with iodine. They often have zinc and selenium as well. So that can help with those if there is any deficiency there. Um, Yeah, all really, really easy fixes. That's it for me, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to know your thoughts below. And 
<laughs> I keep thinking about her um, bikinis. She's wearing bikinis in every post that she does now, which is fine. Like she's in some sort of beautiful place. I think I read Spain and she has a swim line. So she's wearing her stuff, promoting her uh, swim line made from something sustainable. I didn't look into it, but supposedly it's sustainable. But the cut, like what, what, what is this? Is this what's popular now? Because that looks so insanely uncomfortable. It looks like she's bunched up fabric into her asshole, like into her crack. Like, what? what? Like, number one, it looks bad. I'm just, it looks bad. It's not, it's not attractive. Like a thong is attractive. This is not, this is not that. It looks like you took your underwear and wedged it into your butt. Why would you do that? But also it just seems very uncomfortable. So if someone could please elaborate, like, is this the trend now? I don't wear swimsuits. I don't buy a swimsuit. I have one swimsuit that I bought like a decade ago and does not fit me. The boobs do this. And so then I try to tuck them in and then they, they do this. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed it. Please do like and subscribe if you did. And of course, thank you so much to my members and patrons. I do post exclusive content for tier two members and patrons. I do a vlog and then I also do a controversial video. I'm about to record the controversial now and I'll have that up in the next couple of days. And yeah, that's it for me, guys. Thanks again. New video soon. Went upstairs with this shirt on. And everyone, partner, all the kids were like, ooh, I like that. Pretty. It's like, gee, thanks.